idea into a living organism. The revolution that occurred in the government of President Jami has continued to propel most needed changes in the crucial sectors of the economy. River transportation is an important element in the free movement of goods and services and therefore collects substantial revenue for government. Abdinjai, GRTS. Our Excellency, the First Lady, Madam Zainab Yahya Jame, and the Vice President and Women's Affairs Minister, Aja Dr. Isatun Jai Saidi, Saturday evening jointly presided over the 2011 edition of the Miss July 22nd Scholarship Beauty Pageant. The contest attracted a number of girls from tertiary and senior secondary schools. Winners in the various categories, as Isatun Mane reports, received cash prizes amounting to $50,000 each, courtesy of Madam Zainab Yahya Jame. The third edition of the Miss July 22nd Beauty Pageant saw a spectacular display of talents by these young contestants who were vying for the coveted first prize. The program that was initiated by the Gambian leader is aimed at providing a platform for young people to discover their hidden talents. This, according to the Minister for Basic and Secondary Education, has been a success story. I am very delighted to welcome you all to the third edition of the Miss 22nd July Scholarship Pageant an event that was initiated in 2008 by His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia, same Professor Alhaji Dr. Yahya, A.K.J. Jame, when 100 contestants were drawn from the upper basic and senior secondary schools as well as the tertiary institutions in all the regions of the country. The event is not a beauty competition, but rather a battle of wills and intelligence and giving young people the opportunity to effectively participate in nation building. This Minister Fai continued is a noble initiative. As we always seek to clarify, the scholarship pageant is not meant to encourage lewdness, desecrate the sacredness of the feminine body, nor is it intended to expose our very vulnerable and precious female students to any type of social danger. Where this pageant is associated with beauty, as other pageants tend to connote, to appreciate this event, Beauty needs to be conceived in a broader perspective. After rigorous text of the intelligence of the participants during the presentation of their teams and the question and answer session, a 21-year-old girl from the University of the Gambia, Khadija Tumane, was crowned the Miss Twitter and Second Beauty Pageant for the tertiary level, whilst another one for the secondary level was also crowned, with second runner-up for both categories. The first lady unveiled a surprise package for both winners there and then. This is the, the luckiest pack held so far. Her Excellency, the first lady of the Republic of the Gambia, Madam Zainab Yahya Jame, is putting on top of that prize $50,000. Your Excellency, thank you very much on behalf of the winner. The joyous occasion was a moment for the former winners to reminisce on their experience and how the event changed the course of their existence. First of all, I wish to commend His Excellency the President, Chief Professor Al Haji, Dr. Yahya AJJ Jami, for coming up with such an initiative which is aimed at developing the girls of this country through education. The scholarship pageant is a channel through which we can showcase our talents as well as our knowledge within the four corners of the classroom and beyond. The pageant is also a lifetime experience because you get the chance to meet different people from different walks of life. Um, as we all know, today marks the third edition of the Miss July 22nd Scholarship Pageant, which is yet another remarkable achievement initiated by His Excellency, the P President of the Republic of the Gambia, for the sole purpose of creating opportunities for the girl child to be educated to the highest level and play a great role in na national development. The program was punctuated with musical performance by various artists who were present. <laughs> Officials also presented gifts to the First Lady and the Vice President for their tireless efforts in the success of the program. This, many believe, is a clear manifestation of the importance President Jame attaches to the development of youths, especially women and girls from all corners of the country, who are equally given opportunities to change the course of their destinies. For GRTS News, I am Isetumane. The Gambia Bureau of Statistics has started making moves geared towards ensuring a hedge-free census. 
GBOS officials recently traveled to Basai Upper River region for the launching of the population and census mapping exercise ahead of the 2013 population and housing census. Nekumba Demba reports. The United Nations see evidence-based decision-making as a universally recognized model for efficient management of economic and social affairs to overall effective governing of societies today. Therefore, relevant, accurate, accessible, and timely statistics facilitates the development agenda of the Gambia as well as institutional programs, business plans, and individual aspiration. It is against this backdrop that Gambia conducts a combined population and housing census every 10 years. Four of these have been successfully conducted since independence, the last of which was in 2003. The next population and housing census is scheduled for 15 April 2013. Given the scope of the activity, the Gambia Bureau of Statistics is not relenting in its preparation. Many apologies for the poor sound on that report. We should hopefully bring you that story again in, uh, 20, in our news bulletin at 2200 hours. You can also follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website. That is at www.grts.gm. There, you can also monitor GRTS radio live. We'll be back with more stories after the break. Sim card nafa warlimba. Adaso no yata baake. Walang afisel la ying extreme sim card. Il a fait le stream sim cardo sans sai. Ha, dalsta. A fait le ya kele ko teke. Ese sim card ko to sang dala sitan da ma. Wolen a fait le ning extreme sim cardo de muy alon ko dala stang ani lulu credit ko le ba ko no. Dala sitan jo ye tanni lulu soto. Isa soto no du la bel to. Sim card ko to muy alon ko dala stang ani lulu credit ko le ba ko no. Ndo ak wa fi dala stang da mal la. A fait le da mal sin nati no ali. Welcome back to GRT's News to News outside the Gambia now. Police in Norway are still trying to establish whether the suspected terrorist who went on a shooting spree on Friday acted alone. This after documents posted on the internet revealed the plan, they, he planned the attacks as far as 2009. The shooting said to be the worst terrorist attack in the history of the largely peaceful Scandinavian country left almost 100 people dead. Questions are meanwhile being asked about the efficiency of the police after they failed to respond to the attack on the island which la lasted 90 minutes. Let's look at this report for more on that. While the country mourns the victims of the double terrorist attack on Friday, Norwegian police are investigating whether the killer, Anders Bering Breivik, truly acted alone as he claims. He had, has admitted that he was responsible for the bomb attack and for the killing of those people out on the island. He say, says that uh, he was acting alone, but we have to make sure that that's true, that his version is true. According to police, Mr. Breivik began planning the attack in 2009. A few hours before the massacre, he posted a 1,500-page document on the Internet in which he berated Muslim immigrants and multiculturalism and declared himself a follower of the Knights Templar, a medieval Christian brotherhood which fought in the Crusades. He told his lawyer that he had chosen Utoya Island to warn the Norwegian government to change its policies. Mr. Brevik said he surrendered to police after running out of ammunition. He didn't shoot crazy, he shot to kill, uh, actually, and uh, I still see the picture in my head when people are running and falling because they get uh, shot. Uh, while trying to escape, it's, it's very, very strong emotions. Many of the victims hid in the forest. Others threw themselves in the water in an attempt to swim to safety. Why it took police so long to respond is also under investigation. The shooting spree lasted nearly an hour and a half. Utoya lies 30 kilometers from Oslo and can be reached by boat in 20 minutes. 92 people died in the combined bomb attack and massacre. 97 were injured. Several victims are still missing. The government in Cameroon has injected over 250,000 euros into a project to turn the highly invasive water hyacinth into compost for farmers and paper for school. The water plant is described as, a, as the bane of African rivers in some quarters because of its effects on biodiversity. We have more on that in this report. <laughs> 